Hey, folks, it's Frithgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on the Hagenstead map. Let's get back to reliving the glory days. Uh, half the height of the rest of the field and the yield on it was absolutely appalling as well. Uh, it really, really didn't do very well at all. Um, that was the first year. The second year, it was slightly better because obviously once you start using it things do start to improve a little bit and that's and that's what happened it, it slowly started to improve over time but definitely that first year that the, the yield on it was absolutely appalling there was it, it was almost nothing um but it was quite interesting plowing it up and and like converting this which was pretty much it was, it was practically a road and converting that into... I should have just ploughed a little bit here. You know what? We're not going to worry about that. What I'll do instead is I'll bring it up like this. We'll go with it at that kind of angle up there. So for once, I haven't actually got a squate... A, a squate? A square. A straight square. It's a squate. It's a new word. Saves saves time. All right, you, you save a lot of time now. So you can, have, you can have a squate edge. There. It's a square straight edge. It's a squate edge. We haven't got a squate edge on this bit right here. We have got... Uh, big angled on it like that but i think that's going to work well because we need a bit of room here to like be able to swing round. although if we're going to really want that we need to like shave off the edge up here a little bit further i think in order to make that work and in order to have better control over doing it i'm going to make that slightly bigger to come up through here and do this and it's going to go like that that, I think, is a better approach to it. Like that. Excellent. Okay, so we will leave that one like that. That's going to be the edge of the field there. This edge over here, I think, is also all right. The only thing that I am going to do is I'm going to switch that over. And I'm going to do this. And I am going to remove the edge of this one all the way down. So that I haven't got quite so much stuck out into the road. Because, honestly, I don't think that that fits very well. I think it does need, I think we do need to have this track on this side because this is the really busy side and we'll be up and down here with lorries and all sorts of vehicles coming in and out. Uh, I think that this side does actually need to be just a little tiny bit wider like that. I don't think it needs to be any more than that. I don't want to go in another slice. That's too much. So we'll stick it like that and we'll leave it. There's nothing else that needs to be done over here. That's looking pretty good. Right. Let's get you going now. We're not going to plant canola in here. And I'm also not going to put the artificial fertilizer in here either. So let me change that one over. Soybeans, oilseed, radish, grass. Like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop right there. And I'm going to open all of this out like that. I will load in the seed. And then when we've loaded up the seed, we will go around the edges and we will plant the grass. So I will go here and load this up. Plant grass across everything. No fertilizer because we're only using organic fertilizer that we produce from our own cattle. So we're no cheating on this. I'm, I'm not going to allow myself to cheat on this. I'm not going to say, that, oh, no, but that bit will count as um, organic fertilizer. It won't. It's not. We will do it like this. We will do it properly. And then we'll come back and we'll put that fertilizer back in afterwards. So we want to go over this way. Uh... I think if I have hired help buy, he won't buy fertilizer on here. I don't actually know. That's something that we need to test. Let's do a strip down through the middle with the hired help. I'll just put the hired help going straight down through here before I start going around the edge. I'm going to run that down into there like that. And then I'm just going to press H on here. So he's going down through and we are buying. So if I go in here and I have a look, that is actually putting fertilizer on there, which I didn't want to be doing. So now if I manually go and do this, is it still going to be applying fertilizer if I'm manually adding it in myself? So leave you like that. Uh, no, it's not. Right, because I got the hired help buy fertilizer, it's bought fertilizer on that little strip and put it in, which we didn't really want it to go and do. That's fine. We can we can live with the little strip. We've done the test. We now know that it does it. 
I didn't realize that it did it if the machine was completely empty. I didn't think that it did. I thought that it only did it if there was um, stuff in the machine. Um, kind of wondering if I've got enough. It does look like it's going through. I don't want to leave any patches behind. This is one thing that I don't like doing with grass. Is leaving even little tiny spots behind. You know how you frequently get little tiny triangle bits left behind when you're using the hired help on any machines? Uh, like on planting when you're doing your arable crops. I really, really hate that on grass fields. Like I genuinely, genuinely hate having that on grass fields. I would rather go over it three times. Because usually if I'm putting grass into something, it stays as grass. I don't change it round. So, yeah, th th there's no real reason for me to need to go back over and do it again. Which means that I'm then stuck with the little tiny bit that was left behind for all eternity if I don't get it right first time through. And that bugs me. That really, 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 really bugs me. Did I mention that it bugs me? So I want to make sure that we don't have anything like that happening in here. That bit right there, we've got quite a big seed drill here. And it was fine going over those rough patches there. Hopefully it will also be fine going over the rough patches here. This is. I should probably switch over and put the Valtra on this one. Like the arable fields are nice and level. So we, we're able to cope with those just fine. But this here, it seems to be struggling a little bit. But I mean, so far for the actual planting, it seems to have done alright. Possibly this field, we'd struggle a bit with our combines because the, the width of the headers. But I think overall, we wouldn't really have too much trouble with it. I think it would be alright. You know, I could have the hired help doing this. All i got to do is switch off the hired help buys the seed and stuff. Which I might do in a minute. All right, let's bring you down here. So that strip that I went and took up through, there is a piece missing. There is a little tiny bit missing down through there. I can see it right down there. That's the only bit, though. That is literally it there. So it's, it's like those bits there. Occasionally, I'll see them in the middle of the grass field. And I will go back and... Uh, replant them because otherwise that will bug me every single time we go through so if I go back over here like this now that I've gone all the way around the edge I'd actually like the grass in this field to all come right at the same time so I'm thinking I'll just plant across everything so what I will do is if I go into here and then I change this over to seed fertilizer turn that one off I can have the seed bit, but the fertilizer stays off. If I bring you out now, what are you going to do? I'll turn the fertilizer one off. He should. He's doing it correctly now. And you can see right in there. You can see the color of it now. I couldn't really tell from the color of it before. That was, that was what the issue was. I couldn't quite tell properly from the color of it, but... That's now working properly. That is not buying fertilizer. And I've got that sort of narrower strip coming in here. We'll be able to put slurry over the top of this. And most of, like, those outside edges down there, they'll get one coat. And then all of this up here will be classed as having two coats on it, which will work quite well. Uh, you're going to say that you don't like that because there's something in the way. That's fine. We'll go back over. So I'm replanting the entire field with grass. I'm, I'm actually going to do that. I am actually going to go and do the entire field with grass. Put you down there like that. He is struggling to pull that through a little bit. I don't know why he's left his flashing beacons on. So while that one is doing that, let's go and take one of these combines back down to the bottom. We can put it away into the shed. I've got both combines to move, and then I've got the truck to bring back up. I like these combines a lot better than the smaller one that we were using. These go at a reasonable speed. The smaller one only travelled along at about 25k, which meant that it took forever to get anywhere. Whereas this one, he rollicks along at a wonderful kind of speed at 40k, which means that 
we get to where we want to go before we reach the age of 90, which is, is, is quite good. Um, by the time you reach the age of 90, you're actually thinking about retiring from driving combines up and down. So if, if you can get your stuff done before that point, then that's, that's good. That's, that's a good thing. Um, well, saying that, I know people who have gone past the age of 90 and still take part in the harvest. They might not do quite as much as they did when they were a wee bit younger, but they still do a fair old slice of it, and they do like to sit in a combine and drive that one up and down. I can't say that I blame them. I really enjoy driving the combine. Like, that was one of my favourite jobs that I did. Uh, you up that end. Let's go and have a look at you a second. Are you going to be able to get round without that plough being in your way? Or are you going to say, nope, can't do it? Ah. He's able to get through. Ideal. Right, well, we can leave that one there, and I can go to... I'll go to the next combine in a minute, and I'll go and put this one away. And then I think we might get the truck from down the bottom and bring that one up, because that's got a little bit of a trip that he's got to go and do. Uh, we've, we're going to need to get the slurry started in a minute. That's got to be done. We've got to spread slurry across all of this that we've now planted. So we've now got two grass fields. And we got one of those grass fields is actually a reasonable size with all of the extra land that we have now managed to go and add to the farm because we've been able to plough up that road and up against the riverbank a little bit. Yes, we're going to have to be a little bit careful that we don't drive into the river, but that shouldn't be any kind of a problem because any time we are doing work in that field, um, we can just start on the riverbank side and I mean I generally sort of supervise the outside rounds anyway so I don't think that's going to be very much of an issue I don't think we'll have any problems there not really let's bring you in over this way like that and there we go the big difference between this and the uh, an FS13 is that this is normal this, this is like a, a normal crop right in the field. The grass is a normal crop. We can use the hired help on it. In FS13, grass wasn't, a, uh, it wasn't classed as a crop at all. You weren't able to do this, not in any way, shape, or form. So the only way that you could get your... Just bring that one back in around there. The only way that you could do anything with grass is you had to do it all manually. So... Yes, I did work towards having a thousand cows, but I think I only ever actually went for a full thousand once because of the amount of work involved with getting all of the grass in. Because having to do every single aspect of that manually, it did take quite a bit of doing. It did take quite a bit of extra work to get all of that done properly. Um, I mean, yeah, ultimately it was kind of worth it just to be able to say, yes, I'm running a thousand cows, but I didn't keep that up for very long. Um, like, it, it was the end goal, it, and generally I would get towards that end goal, and then I'd say, right, that's it, um, I've, I've had enough with this because of the speed that the cows reproduced at. Now, our pen at the moment has got a capacity of 3,000 cows. That is definitely going to be interesting. If we do go up to that full capacity of near 3,000 cows... That is definitely going to make life interesting. I don't know how much of the map we're going to have to dedicate to grass production in order to keep up with the feed. Because we have to have grass production. It's not like we can choose not to have that. If and Like, I need to have TMR. For the grass production, I've got to have TMR. That that just is... Oops, I'm going to be going backwards. Um... That's an essential. I've, I've got to have grass production. Um, I want total mixed ration with our farm. Not having total mixed ration isn't really an option as far as I'm concerned. It's It's got to be done. It's got to be had because otherwise uh, we're only running our cows at 80%. And I don't want to be doing that. So I'm, I'm going to be aiming to have TMR in them all the time, which means I have to have hay. Uh, or it, it's just not going to work, is it? Right, you are still doing a magnificent job. So while you do that magnificent job, I'm going to go down here. 
and we are going to take our truck a beautiful beautiful sounding truck most amazing sounding truck in existence <laughs> hear it ramp up through yes engine brake oh, oh so good so good Oh, yeah, changing gears, everything. I love it. I absolutely love it. Engine, bro. I love that. It's so cool. Oh, the sound of this thing is just amazing. It is genuinely amazing. I want the sound files of this truck to be standard in the game for some of the trucks in FS22 right if it's not I'm gonna be bitterly disappointed I'm gonna be bitterly disappointed if we don't have that beautiful roaring purr if we don't have that in the next game I am gonna be so disappointed I really am it, it's got to be in here it's absolutely got to be right we'll shut that one off there that's most of our machinery put away now. You've still got that little bit to do there. That won't take you very long. I'm going to go to this one and I'm going to drive this one back to the farm. So that one's ready because we'll be putting the fertilizer spinner on this tractor to go and do that. And once I've driven this one back, I think we will then go and get the slurry spreader on the back of the fence and start spreading the slurry on the field up here. I'm not going to fast forward time until I get to the um, end of the planting because I don't want the grass planting up there to be split. It's already split a little bit because of the, like, the, the two fields being on separate stages and what I'll probably do is I will leave one field as longer grass. We've got plenty of hay in there at the moment. So I leave one field as long grass until the other one catches up to it. So then we're able to cut them all the same. So it's either that or we cut one of them at full length and the other one will be 60% yield. Um, I guess we could go and do that. But honestly, I don't think we really need to. I think it'd be better if we just kind of go with the uh, weight a little bit and then have the higher yield overall. I think that'd be our better option. think so. I think so. What I generally tried to do, although I believe that grass takes slightly longer than a crop to grow, but what I did generally try to do was have them staggered, so I would focus on grass when after the crops had been harvested and had been um, everything had been replanted, but halfway through the growing season, then I had a load of grass that I would go and take care of. Although, once I reach sort of a certain point with grass and storage and everything, I kind of just leave the grass then long in the field until I actually got to the point where I needed to go and get a bit more. And then I go and do it. So sometimes I'd go through two or three crop cycles without taking any grass off at all uh, because I didn't bother about uh, having grass and selling it every single cycle. I just kind of like leave it to it. Right. Everything is now back, apart from this one, which is just doing these last few passes on here. So while that's doing that, let's get this tractor, get it hooked up to the slurry spreader, and then that one can be taken out and we can start spreading a bit of slurry on our new field. We've got 40, uh, about 40,000 litres of slurry, I think, in the main tank. I haven't actually looked for a minute. We've done a few hours of work since then. Let's go and have a look in here. Uh, cows. We have 41,000 slurry. We've also got manure in here as well. So I'd like to get a manure spreader. But at the same time, we're going to need something that will be able to load the manure. Or we need to get uh, conveyor belts. Now, conveyor belts are all right. But they can be a bit slow. And they can be a bit messy setting up. The big problem with conveyor belts in our farm that we've got down here is if you have a look at this, unfortunately the 
heap for this isn't very tidy. Like, it's... It's better if the heap starts at the back. The heap starts at the front for this one, so conveyor belts aren't going to work very well on this one because if you've got it far enough back, we're going to have to move the conveyor belts constantly, and I hate having to do that. So we'll probably do that with maybe the milling machine or something like that. I think that would be the approach to take for it. Uh, oop, let's not punch a hole in the side of that tank, or we are going to be in serious doo-doos. Serious doo-doos. Not just because we'll be up to our waist in the stuff, but also from the environmental agency. They really don't like it when you spill a large quantity of that. They also don't tend to like it when you spread right next to the river, which is what I'm about to go and do. Before I do that, let's go to you. Let's turn these beacons off, shall we? Right. Now... Is everything planted? There is a bit right there that is not planted. It's a little tiny patch. It's just it looked the wrong colour. It's got to be taken out. And we'll go over to the other side and we will check that side as well most carefully to make sure that everything is properly planted. Has to be properly planted all the way through. Now, it doesn't matter if I fast forward time while I'm putting the slurry on the field. And then once we get a growth stage come through, okay, everything down that side is fine. Once we get a growth stage come through, we can then go and... Right, I need to change this one over here. So it's wheat, barley, oat. We just planted canola. Soybeans will be next on the list, although that's not actually the next thing. It's uh, Sunflowers is going to be next. So we'll bring you in here like this. Why aren't you... Okay. It normally it automatically opens it. If it's got it on the ground. But it didn't automatically open it. It's a little bit weird. Right, well I'll leave that one there for a second. I can, like I said, I can fast forward time a little bit on this uh, once I start spreading with this one. Uh, before I do that, we'll go around the edges of the field a bit. I think twice around the edges is what we're going to need to do. I mean, well, twice up and down the sides at least. So let's start with this side here. And you really don't have much of a spreading width on it. Uh, there is a bit of a spreading width. I'm only going to do one pass. I'm not going to do two passes because there's very little of the field that is going to need two passes. So I think we can just kind of like leave it and not worry about it. Um, and then the next time round, like everything will get the proper two coats that we need and it'll be fine. So one down through here. To mark out and then I want to do two up and down each end so let's stop that one there back you up that way like that and head up this side yes I will be getting a bigger spreader fairly early on just because this one like it's got a very very narrow spreading width isn't it like we, we, we could definitely do something that can spread a little bit wider than this um but just for the moment, that is absolutely fine. And I'll take you right up to there like that. And one pass all the way around the edge of the field is just about a full tanker load. So by the time I get back over to the other side over here, there's one thing. Like if, with the seed drill, if you go whizzing that one along uh, right on the edge, it hardly uses up any seed because it doesn't like use the excess. Slurry, manure, and... Um, fertilizer it does use up the excess all right so we got the uneven bits of the field right there was that did it miss a bit look in there i don't think it did i don't think it missed a bit right so there's 800 liters left i'm actually just gonna leave that in the tanker for a second and i'm going to run back over here we can load up some more i know i said on this field that i didn't want to be going right to the edges because I didn't want to be spreading slurry everywhere as we drove round, and I have just completely ignored that with this next one. 
Um, but yeah, um, that, that, that's fine. We, we, we can ignore that. I'm not even sure if we're going to have enough slurry to get through all of this. I really don't. All right, there's... And that was 7,000 litres have just been pulled out there. And we'd only done once around the edge. So we may end up not quite having enough to get across all of the fields. Could be interesting if we don't. But I'm going to do a second pass down this end of the field right here. And then I'm also going to go to the other end of the field. I'm going to do a second pass. I'm hoping then I'll have enough room to be able to have the hired help turning around properly on each end of the field as it goes through. So I uh, run down here like this. I definitely don't want to get any further over than that. I might already be too far over. It's a job to tell, really. It is genuinely a job to tell. So i bring you up there like that and... Might just manually do a little bit down in that corner. No more than that. It's just because that corner didn't seem like it quite had enough slurry put onto it. And then I'll go all the way up over here. This side shouldn't be so bad with turning round. I don't think there's going to be too much of an issue with trying to turn on this side. Apart from that big boulder there, that one might cause us an issue. And it'd be interesting to see if we have that bit where it does the funny turning in the field like we did with the rake. I don't think we'll have that issue turn up, but you never can tell. It's hired help. They do the strangest of things at times. So we'll spin you on round this way and we can now let the hired help carry on with this. And because I've got the hired help working, I'm actually going to... I'm going to go to there like that. I'm now going to fast forward time. And I'm going to, I'm going to sprint forward in time. Although, if I'm working the field, it may leave a section not properly done. It does do that sometimes, doesn't it? If you're working, although that's generally when you just when you're planting. Great demands at the vegetable warehouse. Okay, okay. What's the great demand at the vegetable warehouse? Two hundred and seven for slurry. Well, I'm using the slurry, so I can't really take advantage of that. Two hundred and eighty-seven. Uh, two thousand eight hundred and eighty-seven liters left. Just a little bit more to go. All right, I'm going to let that one stay there for a second and I'm going to take this one and I'm going to start driving away. We can keep an eye on the slurry there. It's got the four o'clock. If we get to like six o'clock and we still haven't had a growth stage come on, then we'll have to wait until morning before we can go and do the uh, fertilizer spreading on the field. I'd like to be able to do it before then. I'd like to be able to do it this evening if at all possible. Really hoping. Oh, we have already had a growth stage. That's ideal. I can put that back down to one. I can get the voucher out in a minute. Put that one. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.